Welcome to the Boone Podcast. I'm your host, Brett Boone, and today on the program, I'm joined by one of the all-time greats. He's an 11-time All-Star, three-time MVP, and when eligible, a few years from now, I'm sure, and I'm sure he hears this all the time, he's definitely going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. Ladies and gentlemen, he's currently working with MLB Network as an analyst, New (laughs) new gig for him. Welcome, Albert Pujols. Albert, thanks for coming on the program. Thank you, Booney. I appreciate it. Good seeing you, brother. Thanks for having me back again. How are you liking it? This is uh this is a I, quick turner this is a quick turnaround for you. You were playing you were playing a minute ago. And now, yes. now you're you're on the other side. You know, I'm having fun with it because as you know, you you love you have the passion and the love you played it for a long time and, and you're still, you know, doing your thing about baseball and try to just just to try to stay at him. For me, that was it, you know. I mean I got a lot of offer, you know, to go be a hitting coach or to be a bench coach for, for a few teams, but I wasn't ready for that. You know, I, I want to be able to to take a couple of years off and, and I love what I do, you know, to be able to do some work with the network, uh, to do some work with the commissioner, you know, where he's trying to spend uh, the game, you know, London. Uh, I was able to go to London this year, go to a school and just teach these kids about the game of baseball, you know, the game that I love um, since you know, I was born, you know. So it's good. I'm having a great time. I've done a few shows with Craig and, and Harold and d Row, So it's fun, you know. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Very cool. I just talked to Harold today. He's coming on the program next week. Um, now, I know you're working with MLB. You're also, you, you mentioned, you're assistant to the commissioner. What what does that job entail for you? Does it just allow you to to stay in the game in some capacity, have some input? Give me a, yeah. give me a little a little follow-up on that. Yeah, we have a group where the group calls CAP, C-A-T, where it's a bunch of guys, you know, retirement guys, Raul Ibanez, Cici Sebastian, myself, a couple of other guys, you know, I don't want to name all the guys because we'll be here forever. But uh, it's just a group, you know, that the commissioner have put together, uh, you know, Kyle, Ken, Ken Griffey Jr. is part of it, where, you know, it's kind of like a little bit advisor, uh, you know, going to meetings and growing the gang and just just having opportunity, ideas of how to get the game better, even the game that we're playing right now, you know, which is awesome, but just different ideas, you know, how can we make the game better, the game that, that we love. So just little things like that and... Uh, I'm having a great time with it, just getting my input in at the end of the day. I don't make those decisions, but I think, uh, you know, I have a lot of ideas from playing this game for sh- such a long time and learning from some of the best players uh, that I play with. Uh, and my job, I think, is uh, to do that, help those guys to learn, to understand more about the game of baseball. In my area, I want to focus more on the Dominican Republic, you know, uh, with everything that's going on with all those Latin players over there, uh, you know, signing contract with with agents and, and people that I feel that is just taking advantage a little bit from them. Those are the things, you know, that I that I want to help, especially the Latin guys right now. Very cool. Uh, I'm going to go back to my playing days a little bit. As we know, uh, you played a long time. I think you played 22, 23 years. Uh, it's a grind. I mean, from the time, and we haven't even got into the off season, what we do in the off season, but it's 162 Mm -hmm. games. I know throughout my career, there were times where, man, it was tough. My team was losing my swing (laughs) stuff and I wanted to go hide. Then one day it's all over with, you know, it's all over with. And and because of the way I grew up in this game, Mm -hmm. it was all, it was nothing. It was my whole life baseball. And then one day when it ended, I kind of was like, well, you know, I never planned for the end. I thought I was yes. going to play forever. Yes. yes. For you last year, coming down the stretch, what an awesome way to finish. Unbelievable. You got over that 700 home run mark, which I don't know how much that was on your mind. As a as a fan and a guy played against you for a long time, I'm looking at it going, man, at his age to get to that 700, it's going to be hard. But yeah. you found a way to do it. And you finished on such a high note, and you're back in your hometown where it all started, St. Louis. Mm-hmm. When it ended, that last game, you took that uni off for the last time. Did you start? Did you think to yourself, "Wow, I'm definitely done," or did it even have any space yeah. in your mind where you thought I can go? On? But you're you're different than us, though. You had yeah, you, know, you were getting, you were getting 
Oops. And go ahead. Yeah. No, no, that's a great question, Booney. You know why? Because um, that is the problem that a lot of the players had and uh, not preparing themselves. For me, I prepared myself over the last three years before, uh, you know, I am my contract with the Angels. I mean, I prepare, I was preparing myself since 2019, knowing that I only had three more years left going into spring training in 19 with the Angels. Okay, what Albert Pujols wants to do? What Albert Pujols want to accomplish these next three years? So for me, that move wasn't, wasn't as tough as it was probably for you and a lot of all the guys because unlike unlike you, I mean, this is this is what I knew forever, you know, since I was five years old, since I started playing this game. You know, you come from a family that plays sports, so that's all you knew. So for me, um, I think what helped me was asking questions to guy that retired before me. Uh, hey, how was the process? You know, Placido Polanco, Gene Emmons, guys that I still in touch with, Edgar Renteria. And you're like, man, we didn't prepare. So I, I, I kind of like pick, was picking their brain. So that way I get myself ready when that time was coming for me. So I knew I had a great year. Um, I knew what I wanted to do, which it was reaching to the 700. I didn't put that much pressure, to tell you the truth, until the almost the last two weeks of the season because I wanted to do it, not just for my career, myself and my family. Now I wanted to do it for the fans. And I want to do it for a country, the Dominican Republic, who has my back, you know, since day one when I got to the big leagues. So I prepared myself really well. Um, there was no doubt in my mind that that was there for me. That's why I said it early in March, as soon as, oh, not early in March, but the last week of spring training when I signed with the, uh, with the Cardinals, I told myself, this is it. You know, I want to announce it because if I end up having a great year, uh, I don't want that to mess with me and say, oh, he needs to come back in 2023, you know? So I didn't want to have that problem. So I, I really knew what I wanted uh, wanted to do. I made my decision. I stuck with it. People were putting microphone in my mouth. Are you sure you're done? You know, and I, I knew it. You know one thing that you're going to learn from me is my work. If I told you I'm done, I'm done. If I told you I cannot do something, I, I, I won't do it. So I don't going to think about it. I don't going to. Maybe, no, no, I'm going to tell you right away. Yes, I do. No, I cannot. And that's it. So that way you, you don't wait for me uh, or, or guess. So that was something that I that I put my mind into. Um, I was blessed to be able to stay healthy. I was blessed to be able to finish my career in San Luis, like you say, where everything started for me. I mean, it was a, a fun, fa fantastic year. I, don't, I think the only thing that I could change, maybe winning a World Series, you know, but besides that, everything was awesome. You know, I closed that chapter of my life uh, in baseball uh, as a player the way that I wanted to. I never thought it was going to happen like that, but I knew that if I stay healthy and I got the opportunity to play, I knew I could still play. And I know that I can still play and put a uniform uh, and contribute for somebody out there. But when is enough, Booney? You know, when do you right. draw that line and you tell yourself, Okay, when is going to be enough? There's life after baseball. You have to enjoy with your family. You have to travel. You know, I'm enjoying what I'm doing with the commissioner. I'm enjoying what I'm doing with the network. I'm enjoying what I'm doing with the angels, you know, going to spring training. And now teaching them the game that I grew up watching, the game that I grew up playing, the game that some of the greatest players told me how to play and how to respect. And that, to me, is really unique. I'll tell you, in – it was such a special finish for you. And there's only a handful of guys. There's only the chosen guys that get that kind of last hurrah. And and as you went through the season, you'd go to other stadiums and you'd get gifts. And, and they really gave you a send-off. There, there's very few of us that get that. And, and it's only for a special few that put up the numbers like an Albert mm -hmm. Pujols did. And very much deserving. But I remember when when uh, you were retired, and I knew you were retired. I said, he's going to play out his contract. Wow, he's getting hot. Wow, he's going to hit 700 homers. I remember my son texting me. He goes, you think, Albert? he goes, you think Albert's going to do it? I said, I don't know. I said, I wouldn't have thought so at the beginning of this year. And my son Jacob said, I think Albert's yes. going to do it. And I said, really? And the day you did it, he texted me. Yeah. He did it. Yeah. So then I was having questions. <laughs> questions to me were, you think Albert will play again? I said, I don't think so. I said, 
because of his position, he he stated, this is my last year. This is it. It just happened to be one of those storybook finishes for you. And as you mentioned, most guys don't get to retire that way. Usually we get to a point where I just can't do it anymore. And, and the mm-hmm. fact that you finished the way you, you did, you could still do it. So, yeah, very unique way to end, but uh, also a very cool way to end it. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I people ask me, you know, one question that, that was rising a lot during the course of the season is like, can he do it? Uh, you know, and I think to me, yes, I knew that I can do it if I get the chance and the opportunity. Remember, I signed five days before they break camp. I signed on a Sunday, Booney. I took a red eye to Florida and I was in the lineup by Wednesday. So you're talking about a guy that was yes hitting, but you know how it is. You know, it's not the same when you had to face live pitching. Right. So for me, uh, I remember Oli told me, hey, big boy, are you ready to play Wednesday? I was like, holy crap, really? And then five days later, an, an opening day roster, you know, in Bush Stadium. So I think what really hurt me w- was not having a, a, a full spring training where I can have my air bat. I was a guy that during my career, I was getting almost – 85, 90 yard bats. I don't know if you were like that. Seven yard bats uh, to get me ready for the season. You know, I only have 11 yard bats in spring training before I had to be on the roster on Monday for opening day. So my struggle early, I'm a guy that you know me for a long time. I don't make any excuses. But that didn't help me out. You know, I didn't have a regular spring training. So I used pretty much my, my April, my May, like a spring training, like I was getting ready for the six weeks of spring training. And I struggled early, which I battle. And yes, maybe a lot of people, uh, you know, had a lot of doubt that I wasn't going to be able to do it. But I remember being here where I'm at right now in Atlanta, praying with the Braves. And I went into the office with Oli Marmo. And Oli Marmo told me, hey, big boy, I know it's been tough, but I, I need you to stick around. I remember that I came into the office and said, Oli, I want to go home. I, I can't do it anymore. It's like, big boy, I, I want you to stick around. Please do it for me. Do it for this organization. This is not you. So he kind of talked me into it right before the break, uh, right before the All-Star break, I'm not going home. And I'm glad that I didn't. You know, then uh, I remember we were in Pittsburgh and I start, I'm start swinging the bat well uh, right after the break. And he was like, okay, big boy, you know, uh, Paul is hurt. No longer is hurt for a little bit. This is why we brought you. I'm going to throw you out there. You tell me when you don't want to play, but I'm going to throw you out there every day. Bro, and look at the last two months of the season. I think it was like, what, 1,700, 1,800? So, so ridiculous. Op- yeah, opportunity. And not just not just the home run. Forget about the mark of getting to 700, but the key home runs that I was hitting day in and day out. You know, it was either to tie game, to, to, to come in a pinch hit a couple of times, hit a grand slam to take a lead. Uh, coming as a pinch hitter uh, with the Cubs, you know, later down the road when we needed it to really close that division. And I was hitting some huge homer, you know, uh, and a good time. But it was the opportunity. Uh, when it clicked to me, I think it was right before the break. Here in Atlanta, I did a couple of adjustments. Then I ended up going to the home run derby. They asked me to if I want to participate in the home run derby. And I told myself, yes, I want to do it for one last time. Why not? One last ride. And I think that allowed me to, to, um, to probably have a better second half. Yeah, it, it was it was pretty remarkable to watch. You finish your career, and I, I look at these numbers. Uh, for, for a guy that had a pretty good career, I look at the numbers and seven hundred and three homers and and 20. <laughs> the thing that gets me, Albert, because I was a, I drove in runs twenty two hundred and eighteen ribbies. That's the guys out there that drive in runs and they know who they are, they are. We look at those numbers, and that's a lot of ribbies, man. It's hey, it, Booney, RBI it's is a over. lot of ribbies. They huh? say the RBIs are overrated in this oh, in this on. era. Oh, they are nice. <laughs> so stupid. Three MVP. <laughs> I got this. Do you, have you ever have you had a chance since you retired to sit back and kind of reflect? on your career, how special it was and, and what your imprint, what it meant to the game of baseball? Yes. Now that I'm done with it, uh, 
I am. I have. You know, uh, people ask me why you didn't when you play, because it was hard for me. You know, when I was playing, try to think about number, try to think well, that I'm passing every day, especially down towards the end of my career. You know, every day. See, even if I strike out, it was like a record. Like I tie so and so. Yeah, you know, getting a walk or getting a base hit. So it was pretty awesome. You know, every day coming to the ballpark and knowing that man, my just another thing that I'm gonna do to try to put my name in the record book. But right now that I'm done with the game, I enjoy it a little bit more. Um, and look at those numbers, and man, really, really blessed. You're talking about Hank Hair right behind Hank Hair. You know, there we are. Three thousand hits. You know. I mean, only four people. I mean, 650 homers, 650 dollars. Nobody ever done that. I mean, what? Like, you're talking about a young little boy that all he wanted to do is just play baseball and got that opportunity. And you're going to tell me that 15 years later, I'm going to be in the big leagues doing all that? No, like, I wouldn't ever thought. But that was God's plan. So I, I, I do it. I actually was in New York. We were talking about. Uh, those numbers, and I'm enjoying it a little bit more right now that I'm down playing the game. Uh, I'm sure you're hearing it a lot. I said it at the opening of this of this program is uh, future first ballot Hall of Famer, and and we all know hey, all your peers, guys like Booney, guys that played with you, guys that played against you. The numbers they're indisputable. You are going to be a first ballot, but. For the guy that's got to get that phone call when that Hall of Fame boat comes in, do you always sit there? I got to wait and get the call. I know I'm probably going to get in, but I still got to wait <laughs> and get the call. Where on the day of the Hall of Fame, if you call Booney, what do you think? Albert, what do you talk about? Just call me after you get the call. I know you're getting the call, but for you, uh, that's how you're probably be, being introduced right now. Future first ballot Hall of Famer. Does that wear on you? Like, yeah. I'll wait till till it's done, or you kind of know it's already done. <laughs> no, I don't think about it, Booney. I take it like like I have approached my life. I, uh, you know, I don't like to think about the future. I cannot control that. And the whole reason for me, I think I learned on a young age about this, is because I want when that moment come, like I want to be able to enjoy. I want that moment to surprise me. I want on that moment to share uh, to share that moment with my family, friends, uh, you know. So I really don't want to think about it because what about if it doesn't happen just the same way that you imagine? You know, you don't want to enjoy. It. So for me, I'm thinking about okay, let it happen, and then when it happens, then we enjoy a party, or whatever. Uh, so yes, it doesn't bother me uh, when people say that. Um, you know, you know, the first one they asked me either, uh, there's a lot of people that always ask me about it. Oh, you know that you're going to be out there like, guys, let's wait, let's wait five years, you know, let's not ruin it. So, uh, hopefully, you know, it'll be exciting, obviously when that call is made, you know, in five years from now. And, uh, we've had Albert on, on the Boone podcast before he's a, he's a Boone podcast veteran, but I, I we met each other back in 2001. Albert was a young player, he's a rookie, and we went on our first Nike trip together. And believe me, uh, the players on that Nike. <laughs> yeah, when you took my that, money bowling. I took your money. <laughs> but, you know, we all we all knew, uh, all the guys, the veteran players on that trip, we all knew what a special player you were going to be. You know, 2001 was a pretty, pretty good statement of how good you're going to be. We all knew how you, good you were going to be. When did you know? that you were going to be on a special trajectory, like putting up these kind of numbers? When, when did it hit you? Because we all knew you were a great player, but great player doesn't translate into the numbers that you accumulated over your career. When did you know as a player? Yeah, for me, I think, uh, you know, I think it was around, maybe when I was 17 or 18, uh, right, right out of high school. Uh, I was able to, you know, playing with great players that I was facing, uh, knowing that I, I know I knew that I was gonna get probably the opportunity to get drafted. Uh, so that's when that shift uh, came on on me, and I knew that I had a pretty good chance to be a decent player, um, to be that player and have that career that I have. Uh, I mean, I'd be lying in your face right now. I never. 
I never would have thought that I was going to have that career like that, especially for a guy that got drafted in the 13th round, 402 in the draft. Um, you know, I wasn't a big prospect. But one thing, Booney, that I knew, that nobody that was wearing that uniform that day was going to outwork out, out work me, you know. I I took this game serious every day. I did what I had to do and and get better and learning from veteran guys and guys that helped me out along the way. After 2012, you make the decision. You sign with the with the uh, Los Angeles Angels. You'd had an unbelievable career in St. Louis up to that point. That city loved you, but business is business, and that's mm -hmm. we see that a lot in today's game. You got to do what you got to do. When you went to Anaheim. And you signed that you were one of the first guys to sign one of those big contracts. You go to you go to Los Angeles, you play for the Angels. It's not that cardinal uh fan fan base that you grew up with, right? And have yeah. seen you. You've got a lot of equity with those fans. You're going to to play for the Angels now all of a sudden, yeah, we've seen what he's done at St. Louis, but he's got to do it here. Did you feel pressure going to to Los Angeles, or was it just no? This is what I do. This is business. Now I got a new team. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, I that that was the year that I really realized that it was a business. Like I was playing for an organization that I gave everything in San Luis. I thought I, I was going to stay in San Luis. That didn't happen. But you know what? I was I'm honored and, and blessed to have the opportunity to play for the Angels. Uh, yes, the career didn't go as well as I wanted to, you know, most of my injury, especially when I got hurt in 2013 and 12, uh, when you start having lower, a lower half problem, you know that things start changing. And that's what happened with me. I felt that when I got hurt in Boston, the, the knee, I ended up having surgery, that knee never healed a hundred percent. Uh, and I played like that for three years. Then I ended up hitting my other knee. And then I started making some adjustments. But one thing that I say, yes, I probably didn't put the power number and probably the batting average and throw the runs like I was in San Luis. But I think I had a decent decent career <laughs> over there in Anaheim. You know, I think anybody would take those numbers. Yes, it was in the 330 and 130 and, three, and, and 40 bombs. But, you know, I ended up hitting, I believe, uh, you know, 30-plus homer. I think it was like three times. I hit a 400 season, uh, one or two times. I mean, and then after that, you know, things went down. Things went south because the injuries that I have and the lawyer had. And it was tough. Believe me, it was tough. I think, uh, you know, I heard Trent Turner the other, the other day in Philadelphia saying, hey, I will even boo myself. I will, you know, I stink right now. And then now the guy is killing it. It is like that. It's so embarrassed, you know, because you know what you can do. And just because an injury in your body uh, is not allow you to, to, to perform the way that you want it to. One mistake that I make that I regret, it was playing with my knee, taking, I mean, I used to drain my knee every single day because I want to give that to the fan. I want to be that in the field. I, I want to be respected in the clubhouse. I want my teammates to know I am here when I could easily take a year off and heal really well. And that's one thing that I regret. Not be able to take the time off from my knee to heal properly, and I was able to go out there. I mean, I remember the doctor one year, I think it was in 16, he drained the knee, he took like 85 cc, after the game, um, before the game, like around three o'clock. And then after the game, he took another 55 and he told me, Albert, I can't believe you're doing this. What, what are you doing to yourself? I'm like, you know what? Because I need to be out there playing with the guys, even if it's in one leg. So if there's one thing that I regret is that, the not giving my time to my body because I care. Man, I care about, I, 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 I don't want people to think that I was faking an injury. I don't want people to think that I was just, you know, getting the money that I was getting paid. I had a responsibility, and that responsibility was to be on the field no matter what. And, and that's what I did. You know, that's what I did. Hey, listen, it didn't work out the way that 
that I was imagining that it was going to, that it was going to work out with the angels, but there's nothing that I regret only that I just didn't take the time that I need to, to heal my body. You're right though. And, and today, today's game is a little bit different than, especially when you came in definitely the bulk of my career where that mentality you just spoke of was the norm. If we were one of the main guys, everyday player, we play no matter what. You almost have to wheel us. We we have to be on crutches not to play. Mm-hmm. Now, maybe it's not always the smartest thing, mm-hmm. but it was our mentality. That's mm-hmm. what we did. We show up. Well, we get paid. Our, our teammates rely on us. Mm-hmm. They expect us to be in that three-hole, that four-hole every day. Mm-hmm. And, and if you're not, your teammates are probably saying, well, if Albert's out of the, if, if Albert's saying he can't play, there must be something really wrong because you have that reputation. And, and for the most part, most of my teammates were that way. Yeah. There were a mm-hmm. few that would take that time when given to them, mm-hmm. but the vast majority of the guys I played with throughout my career, it's like, man, if you can physically get on the field, you get on the field. And that's just the way we, that's, that's all we knew as players. Well, Booney, you learn it from your dad. You, you come from a, a, a you know, family that played again. I mean, you, you, you came up before me. You know that that was our era where yeah. there's, I remember being in the training room and my wire told me, hey, what are you doing in the training room? I needed, I didn't step into that training room in four years after that, you know, because it, it's the message. What message? Booney, and I saw you play, bro. And I saw you when you were um, healthy. And I saw you when you were out there, you know, that that you should have took a couple of days off. But you, why were you out there? Because the responsibility. Because you were that guy, you know, I'm pay, playing in a position in the middle of the line you know, that had to perform. And everybody was counting on you. And you want to send a strong message to your teammate. So that was the way that we grew up. Hey, listen, the, the game has changed, you know, from all one to to right now i don't want to say that the guys are soft right now i think hey listen if we, my encouragement to those guys if you need the time off do it don't do what i did because uh it it, it cost me it cost me you know probably one or two or three more years that i could have probably continued to play uh if i would have take that probably uh year off and, and really heal my body properly and i'll segue into this you, you mentioned um you in Anaheim, in LA, uh, we got this guy Shohei Otani. You played with him. Mm-hmm. You talk about the expectation. Your numbers were so good in St. Louis the first half of your career. You're right. You'd still you'd go hit thirty, drive in a hundred, hit two ninety five, and people are going to say Albert had a crappy year mm-hmm. because you set the bar so high. So mm-hmm. I guess from a player looking at you, it's like, it must be nice to get booed off the field when you hit 30 and drive in a hundred. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's kind of like people saying, man, this guy's good before we boo him. It's most guys best year of their career and it's your worst. So yeah. I guess that's attributed to you. Mm-hmm. You're watching a guy now from the booth, a uh, guy you mm-hmm. played with Shohei Otani. There's no way he can do better than he's doing. I mean, he's pitching at an all-star level, number one level. He, he's leading the league in home runs, something we've never seen before. So you talk about expectations being up here, anything going forward, it's going to be like, Oh, wait a minute. You only hit 30 and you, mm-hmm. you know, you only, you only gave us 180 innings this year and you didn't win a Cy yeah. Young. That's how he's going to be judged. Now the contract he gets, yeah. it's probably going to be, Hey, you want to make this much money? Well, there's a lot of criticism that comes along with it. Mm-hmm. You as an analyst now looking at the angels, do they have a shot of keeping Shohei in Los Angeles? I think, you know, one thing, and I, I love Shohei, and, but remember, Shohei, when he came to the state, too, I remember people talking to it, too, that, hey, this guy, there's no way this guy's going to have success here. I mean, they were, they were not giving him an opportunity to feel comfortable. Remember, you're taking a kid out of his country to come to a different culture to try to get used to, to Major League Baseball every day with the schedule. I mean, it was tough. It took him a couple of years. Uh, he struggled his first year. I remember him coming to his spring training and following me to the cage because he, he used to have a leg kick. So he came to the cage. He saw me hitting and started asking me questions about my, my stand and my tippy toe. He asked me why, why I'm doing You know what he did? He made that adjustment. He went to the tippy toe after the year that he struggled. I don't want to say that that 
what helped him to have the success that he had right now. But to your point is, like, hey, give the chance, give the opportunity to a guy to feel comfortable, and that's what he's doing. The guy got two years under his belly, uh, and then after that, he felt comfortable when the guy is this, unbelievable. He deserved every little penny that's coming out of his way. Now, to keep him, uh, hey, listen, for business, is he's no no brainer. His contract, no matter where he goes, whether it's Anaheim, Dodger, San Diego, San Francisco, his contract is gonna be paid off right away because the TV, what he can bring, you know, to the team. Um, I think what you need to look at it is okay. Should I trade him and get the package that I needed? Well, that that is over. They're gonna keep him. But I think Anaheim can keep it. They have, already has the money. There's, it's, it's not that, that he doesn't have the money, but how you look at it is, okay, you know that Mike Trout in two or three years is your DH. Mike Trout won't be able to play his career in center field or left field the rest of the year. So you got your DH established already, you know, two or three years ahead, ahead from now. So you need to think about that. Shohei Otani, he can only pitch and play defense. He cannot play uh, any position. So you need to look all those things as a GM, as an owner. Okay, what is going to be the best scenario for us if we end up keeping Otani? You know, are we going to keep Otani to a learn turn to give him maybe three or four years? Or are we going to give him seven years, 700 million, whatever it is? But is that going to be better from the team? Especially when you have a guy like like Rendon at third base, you know. Then you got Shohei, let's say he gets 700 million. Then you got Trao, he's 400 million. I mean, and three guys, you're talking about $1.2 billion that yeah. you already committed on it. That's a part you know? of the team. That's a part of the you, team. You know, so you need to look at those things. So I don't know, man. I mean, uh, I think, you know, for – for business, he's the right guy. Can already keep it? Of course he can. But at the end of the day, if you sign Shohei, you need to go and get some pitching. You need to go and get some good core guy that's going to help you out the rest of the, the his career all the time that he's going to be there, you know, uh, to win championship. I, I look at it this way too, Albert. When when I'm looking at the big picture, and they're saying, "Can can Marino w- will he sign back with with uh, the Angels?" I I I try to tell people, listen, he came over here. He could have played wherever he wanted to play. He chose the Angels for a reason. So now I understand. Uh, once as your career goes on, your priorities change. But it's going to come mm-hmm. down to where does he want to play? Where does he want to raise his kids? Where what ballpark is comfortable for him, and uh, I think the money's going to be an afterthought because I think the teams that you mentioned uh, mm-hmm. that are coming after him, I think the money's all going to be big money. It's going to come mm-hmm. down to Shohei. Where are you most comfortable? Where do you want to raise your kids for the next ten years? And 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 you know another thing is okay. And winning a championship, you need to think about those things. You know, okay, yep. I'm going to go to a team. Not to say that the Angels cannot win a championship. I think, you know, this year, obviously, losing Trout, I hurt them pretty bad. Losing a couple of guys. I love the addition of bringing CJ Crum back and a couple of, guys, couple of the moves that they have made. I think they have a championship quality ball club. I think they're just a couple of pieces that they need to add on it, and they're going to be back out there on top, you know? Um, and, you know, unfortunately, we, we're going to see what's going to happen in the next couple of months, what's going to unfold. I think the million-dollar question is that. Will the, will the angel sign him? Can the angel have the money? Of course, already has the money to do it. I mean, like I told you, the contract, whatever his goal, is going to be paid off because the TV from Japan and everything else. I mean, Jersey selling all, everything. It's, it's, I look this. I look Shohei Otani contract almost like Messi going to Miami, you know? Right. Like, yeah. listen, <laughs> David Beckham know that, that bringing Messi here, his contract was going to be paid off because the TV and everything, the fans and all that, at the end of the day, no matter where Shohei go, his contract is going to be taken care of during those seven years there, whatever he decides to go. Um, but I think that the, the question is, can they end you? Are they going to keep him? And I think Artie is going to make a, a good offer to try to keep him, knowing Artie. 
uh, because he's like, it's amazing. I mean, player like like show don't come around too often, and you have to enjoy it. Just something that you said it. Can he get better? Is he gonna get better in this? Remember, is he got a Tommy John? I mean, uh, how much longer before that ligament? You know, uh, hurt. You know, he hurts that ligament again. Who knows? Who knows? You don't wish any of those bad things, but you need to think ahead of those things because it happened, especially when as a guy that every six day he's pitching and he's playing every single day. And he's you know, stealing he's gonna, bases. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna wear out. No matter how young he is, your body is going to wear out. I was there, you were there, Trotter was there. Every player that has gone that has gone through the big league and had a successful career. Junior was there, Hall of Fame. I mean, everybody body breaks down. You know, yeah. so you need to think about those things. Yeah, without a doubt. And and as far as this year. Uh, obviously, as players, we all want to win. Uh, but this year, I just don't think the Angels can catch them. You know, they got you got Houston, you got the Rangers having a great year in that division, and you got Seattle coming strong at the end. And they got more, and they got some really good pitching. Their 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 young starting rotation in that bullpen's really good. Um, want to talk about your Cardinals real quick? I'll let you out of here in a minute. Disappointing season for the Cardinals. What happened? We're we're not used to seeing the Cardinals have disappointing <laughs> seasons. I mean, it seems like year in and year out they win every year, but we don't see them yeah. at the bottom of that division. It's tough, you know. Obviously, you know they brought some guys in there that they were that they were counting on it uh, that didn't get they didn't stay healthy. You know, losing O'Neill in spring training for a while, losing Dillard Clarkson. You know, you're talking about uh, Tommy Edmond for a while. You're talking about like a, a, a third of your you your your team. I mean, guys, there you were counting on. Yes, you brought Jordan Walker up and and, and stand it down, which you know that was tough on him. But I think that's a kid that's gonna have a great career. He he loves to make those adjustments. He's making those adjustments right now. Hey, it's, it's a disappointment, you know, just for myself and a lot of the Cardinals fans. But I think you know what I love is that they didn't sell. They kept the core guys. They kept Nolan Arenado. They kept Paul Goshman, you know. Yes, they trade Ferry and a couple of other guys, but they kept the core guy knowing that, hey, listen, it's just one of those years. We need to ride this. I'm sure next year they're going to be back on top again, you know, because it's not a strong division. And to me, they have some of the best prospects, although don't slip away. I'm looking at Cincinnati and I'm looking at Pittsburgh, how I look at Tampa 10, 10, 10, 15 years ago. You know, they got all those young guys that played through the minor league, and now Cincinnati's bringing all those young kids. And Pittsburgh, how I know that. I, I think that division is going to be really, really strong in the next five years because the talents that they have in that division, you know, with Milwaukee, Chicago, you see what David Ross is doing in Chicago, and I'm believing what Jack. And they have a lot of young players. So I think that division is not going to get any weaker. I think that division is going to be stronger. And I think that's why the Cardinal probably thought about it and kept these guys. They're like, we need to keep the core guy. We cannot get rid of Paulie and we cannot get rid of Nolan. Because these are, if I'm building a house, you know, this is like my pillar that I'm going to lean towards training my young athletes that I have and my young players, and that's what they do in that clubhouse. Hey, are they disappointed? Of course. They, they, you know, I can see in their faces. You know, I had a couple of times uh, that I covered their game, and, and it's tough, but it's one of those years. I was in that organization when that happened, when everybody was expecting us to win, and we didn't. And I was in that year that we, nobody was rooting for us, and we ended up winning championship. So I think this is one of the years that they need to ride it with, flip the pace in the offseason, bring a couple of guys that can stay healthy. I'm not talking about you need to go get a number one or number two starter. I'm, think, I'm talking about guys that can stay healthy and can give you 20-star, 30-star during the course of the year and win you 15 games, 13, 15 games, because that offense is going to carry. Very good. I'm going to give you two teams that are underachieving, would say the least, and I'm going to 
I'm going to give you two teams that are really having good years. I just want your opinion on them. Let's go first with the Mets and the Padres. Obviously, on paper, we didn't expect them to be at the bottom. Yeah, I, I think if for anything else, uh, as a fans, I think in New York, I think they're more disappointed of the Mets, you know, because all the move and the payroll that they had. Uh, I think, uh, you know, nobody was expecting this. Hey, listen, you need to Google it. I don't know. But we were talking the other day. This might be the first time that you're going to see two New York teams not what? being in the postseason. Yeah. One of them. And not even that, in Boston, you need to throw them out there because some of those guys, are, yeah. although they're playing well and they're not too far away from making that, that wild card, but listen, you might, I don't know when was the last time that happened that none of the team from New York made it to the postseason. So, um, you know, I don't know. The Yankees are still in. I think they need to start playing better. Uh, I think they have the potential to try to make it to the wild card. Can they win it? Anybody can win it. When you're in that wild card, you know, anything can go. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that's the message that your brother is throwing out there. Guys, we just need to get in. Get one foot in that door. I mean, look at Philadelphia last year. Yeah. They got hot at the right time. They came to St. Louis and they took two out of two two games out of us and knocked us out, you know. But it's getting hot at the right time. And I think the Yankee can do that. San Diego can still do it. I think they're not out yet, so don't come then out. I think that little shit that they have in there. I know that they had uh, in Seattle. They had a, a team meeting, a players meeting. I think uh, they're gonna start playing better. That's a team that you cannot slip away because they have the potential of winning a championship. If you look at that lineup, if you look at that bullpen, if you look at that starting pitching, that team can be the Philadelphia Philly from 2022 this year, the San Diego Padres. So don't slip on that team. I'm going to give you two feel-good stories this year. Baltimore Orioles, haven't seen them at the top in, in a long time. Uh, they're winning that, that, that mighty American League East. And then the Texas Rangers with Bruce Bochy coming out of retirement, uh, running them at the top, probably best offensive team in the game. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna talk about those two, but don't you know? I want to throw in there the my the Marlins. I mean, was Kip Mike? Was Kip Mike? Was she? Was Kip Schumacher, I'm gonna give him some love because he's my boy. What he has done with that payroll, um, you know, in Miami. I think if you were to tell a Skip Schumacher, hey, in August, you know, 10 or 14, you're going to be uh, three games out on the wild card, he would have took it right away in spring training. So I think I'm going to give him some love to them. Uh, back to Texas, man. You just you bring a Hall of Fame manager. Whenever he's done playing this game, he's going to be in the Hall of Fame. We success. I think see why Chris Young out there, he was really aggressive in the offseason. Uh, making some move, uh, although the, the ground move didn't work out this year, but he's thinking about the long term. Okay, that didn't work out. I'm gonna bring a couple of other guys in the trade that's gonna help on out some win. Co signing Cody Seager, you know, Brandon Steeman. I mean, they are loaded. And then what Garcia is doing? Oh, Garcia. If, he, if you beast. take out, if you take Otani from the American League, Garcia might be the MVP of the American League this year. You I know? agree with you. I so what, with you. what he's done is just unbelievable. I love what Baltimore is doing. And one test that I saw the other day was when Philly blew the game the other day. He gave up that grand, that grand slam from Tucker. And he bounced back the next day and got to say, I love that opportunity. As a manager, man, that has to feel good. As a player, that has to feel good that your manager believes in you and he throw him out there. He ended up walking, uh, you know, talker the next day, but he got to say, I love that energy. I think it's great for baseball. I think the Orioles was kind of like the team that everybody was walking in and, and everybody, oh, we're playing the Orioles. Oh, you know we're going to win two out of three or we're going to sweep this guy. You cannot do that. And they have a great ball club. They have a great, club, great ball, ball club. I love that series that they play against the Houston Astros. I mean, they were, I don't think they won that series, but they won one game. But every game, they were in it, in it, every game. And I love it. I love it. And that's a team that you cannot sleep on either. Baltimore, they're, they're tough. All right, I'm going to give you a couple of fun things and get you out of here. Best pitcher 
early in your career that gave you the most trouble early in your career? For me, uh, I think it was Roy Holiday. I mean, oh. Roy Holiday was tough. I mean, you facing, you know, that guy was tough. He was mean. He, you look at him and, and you knew you had it. You were in for a battle. So I, I, I think he, it was him towards the end of my career, Kim Felix, which I want to congratulate him one again, once again to get inducted into the Myers Hall of Fame. Well deserved and unbelievable career. Hopefully he has a chance to, to make it to the hall too. But Roy Holiday is my guy, man. He was tough. And you just answered it. I was going to say, who before last year when you when you retired, who was the guy that you said, well, at least I don't have to face him again. But you answered that with with King Felix late in your career. <laughs> yeah, King Felix was tough, man. I mean, I think I'm hitting like my career against him was like two nineteen and sixteen, seventeen punch outs, and I mean it wasn't pretty. But you know. I think I shared this the other day on the network. What I love about Kim Philly was that he was the same guy every single day. I remember I hit a double, a key double, which I think I tied the game, and he came all the way to second base and laughed at me. And he was like, uh, "How do you hit that? For that? How do you hit that? That that uh, that split or that changer? You know, it was down and away. I ended up hitting a double to right field, but like." His smile, like like the way that he approached the game. I mean, when when I went to Seattle, man, I wanted a and I was facing Felix. I wanted to swing first pitch right away because I didn't want to get to two strike and get that pressure or everybody in left field. Kick, 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 kick. You know, but he was a tough matches for me, and I love. Although I didn't have a good success against Kings Felix, but I had a I, I had a great battle every time. Like I enjoyed facing him every single time you know well albert pujols this has been a pleasure man looks hey you're getting into it i i wanted to test you out today i know this is new for you how Break was it how i did it tell me tell me dude tell me i love it you, you think i have a job in the future <laughs> I, I think you got a future man i appreciate you it. know booty what what? What, I, what i learned about this game as you know I and mean, i'm sure because i can see on you when we talk with the opportunity that that I've been in the show with you and being around with you is the passion that we have. And when you have the passion for this game, again, that has been so good for us, that's why you pass along. And I'm not an analytics guy. Uh, you know, you can tell me about any analytics. I don't, I, that's not me. I'm going to talk to you baseball from the spirit. How did Albert Pujol prepare? How did Albert Pujols, uh, you know, when he was in tough situation on a slum, which I never believe on it. I believe that sometimes when you're going through some tough time in your career, you just need a day off or you need to back off a little bit. And you need to give credit to that guy in the mouth that you face every fifth day, you know? So, good so that's what I, you know, yeah. So that's what I love to do, man. I love to talk baseball. That's that's what I did and that's what I'm doing right now. I, I don't want to. I don't wanna get in the microphone and I'm gonna rip a player off because I was a player and I know how tough that is. Um, but I, what I do is it just trying to teach my people and young player right now. Maybe will we'll work, maybe it's not. But if I can send that message to to one or two players, I did my job because that thing is gonna multiply. And that's something that I learned from some of the great players. You know, Gene Emmons, Mark McGuire. Edgar to Renteria, Matt Moore, Woody Williams, Daryl Kyle, that my rookie season, unfortunately, I didn't play that long with him, but he told me getting in the box, don't be afraid to get into the All-Star game. You know, and stuff like that. Like, I came up in an era that there were great players They told me the right way. And I think that is our responsibility to do the same. And that's what I do when I do the network, when I'm doing games. Hey, I'm talking about my experience, you know. How did Albert Pools prepare? Because that's what fans wants to know. They don't care about analytics stuff. They don't want to hear that. That's why you got the expert to do that. They want to know how Albert Pujol used to prepare. How Albert Pujol was in the clubhouse with Guy. Okay, Albert, how do, how do as a player, you approach when it happens in the game? And that's what I'm trying to do right now, you know? You know what's awesome, Robert? Because you retired like yesterday you have that credibility of 
Well, when Albert speaks, he played in 2001 when the game was different, but he also played last year and he's Mm -hmm. speaking the same thing. So when you speak about how you prepared, what is a recipe for success there? There's not too many people that have as much credibility as you because you just came off the field. So that plays. How are they? Hey, Albert, what'd you do last year? Yeah, I was uh, you had 305 at bats a year ago. You hit 24 home runs. Yes. At the age you were at. It's not yes. like you were 23 yes. and your body's in your prime. You did it there. So when you speak to how you prepared and this is what you need to do to be a successful big league hitter, what are people going to say to you? Like, yeah, I just came off the field. So I think that's an awesome. Uh, and bless, man. I mean, to be able, have. be able to be able to play to say, Booney, that I play in your era. You know, right. and then the old era, if you want to call it that, and then the new era. So I right. play in two era. You know, I mean, blessed to say that. How many players they can say that? Um, CC Sebastian, they just retired the other day. Miguel Carrera, they just retired this year. Albert Pujols. Yeah. I'm talking about you know they play in their old era and then our new era of right now. This game, mm-hmm. and that to me, that's what I tell guy. And listen. I'm not here to try to change any approach. I'm not here. You know, when I approach a young guy, I, I make sure that I don't put that pressure on them. Hey, listen, if you want to li- listen to me, I give you one or two pointer. Hopefully it helps. Hopefully sometimes it doesn't, you know, but I don't need any credit. What I'm doing is what I'm passing along is what those players did. The people that pay before me, you know, they play before me. People that, that that told me the right way way before me, and that's because they did it. I'm doing that. That is my responsibility to do it now. It's in the table. It's there. I lay it down. You know, when I when I got released by the Angels and I went to the Dodgers, that's what I did with those young players over there. I lay it down on the table. I'm like, I'm not here. Don't look at me. Just look at me as another coach that you can approach, somebody that you can trust. I'm here to try to help you. I went to the Cardinals last year. They have a bunch of young players in there that I that I was helping out. And don't look my career. I'm just here to try to help you out. I'm here to pay the price and, and, and pay a tribute to the players that did it before me, you know? And I'm sure that's the same way Thursday in you know, your career. You were doing the same thing. Yeah. I mean, guys were teaching you the right thing, which I think... At the in this era, I think that's the thing that kind of like had take a left turn, you know. Like guys, right now, this new generation, they kind of some of them. I don't want to say all of them, but that generation needs to get back on track, and and really, and baseball overall needs to bring those players they used to play and bring them in. You know, quit relying on the computer. You know, the computer doesn't gonna tell you what to do when you have men in scoring position. You know, I mean, you have to have that experience. Guy used to tell me, Albert, how are you so good driving runs? I'm like, because I love it. I agree with you. I mean, when Mm -hmm. you when you're giving a young player that advice. And the only thing we can hope as as veteran players and old players passing on what was passed to us, like, hey, Mm -hmm. one day I just ask that you pass this on to the next generation when it comes your turn. And that's and that's how we keep an unbelievable game. Unbelievable. We keep doing that. Exactly. And uh, that's the thing I think that we need to bring back, you know, uh, to the game. But at the end, man, I love the game. I love, you know, like how these young athletes right now, like, it's just crazy how good yeah. are they, the talent. I mean, the Tatis, the Acuna, you know, I mean, what they're doing in this game is, is just unbelievable, you know. So you, you have to, as a fan, I enjoy it. I enjoy it every single day. Very good. Well, Albert, th- this was a pleasure, man. I appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, a lot mm-hmm. of great stuff. Uh, once again, congratulations on an unbelievable <laughs> career. I don't even need to get into the numbers. All the, <laughs> all the accolades were so so great. But uh, and and just as fine of a man, you know. Uh, no, appreciate what a wonderful Bonnie. person you've you've become, have been. Uh, mm-hmm. And I wish you all the best in your future adventures and and uh, this venture with 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 the network. Uh, all the best to you. For those mm-hmm. of you out there listening or watching the Boone podcast, I appreciate listening and we'll see you next time.